Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we will be talking about a unique biome known for its beautiful and colourful landscapes but also the rich network of life that it supports. Temperate deciduous forests are species rich and hugely diverse ecosystems with unique layers of vegetation that provide homes for many species. They are widely known for their annual dropping of leaves in the autumn, creating a picturesque landscape. Deciduous forests are located at latitudes of 40 to 50 degrees north and south. In the northern hemisphere, they can be seen widely throughout the UK, parts of eastern US, Japan, eastern China and many regions within mainland Europe. In the southern hemisphere, they are found within southeastern Australia, New Zealand and Argentina. As highlighted within its name, it has a temperate and moderate climate with constant and evenly distributed levels of precipitation throughout the year. The average annual precipitation in this biome is 1500 to 2000 mm. The biome features four seasons, summer, autumn, winter and spring. In the height of summer, temperatures can reach up to 30 degrees Celsius and in the winter, temperatures can plummet to between freezing and 5 degrees Celsius. The structure of the vegetation consists of separate layers such as the canopy, understory, field and ground layer. The canopy is filled with tall trees such as oak, ash, birch, beech and maple, which all try to compete for every bit of sunlight. When the canopy is fully formed, it blocks huge amounts of light for the lower layers. The understory layer is the one below the canopy and consists of smaller trees, most of which have been stunted due to a lack of light or have adapted to surviving in low light conditions. Hazel, hawthorn and bramble are some examples of typical understory species. The field layer, or the shrub layer, consists of dense forms of vegetation no more than one meter above the ground. The productiveness of this layer depends on the amount of light that shines through the canopy. Sedges, grasses and herbs can all be found in this layer. Lastly, the forest floor is composed of everything that lies on the floor itself, such as leaf litter, moss and fungi. Although it may not look productive, the forest floor provides a number of resources for insects and birds, as well as fungi which recycle the nutrients here. These different layers combine and interact with one another to form a diverse and well-functioning ecosystem that is able to support a wide variety of animal species. As this biome generally is found at quite high latitudes, there are often big differences in temperature between each season. The temperatures are very different in both winter and summer, as expected. However, the productivity of the ecosystem varies greatly too, as throughout the summer months, flowers fruit and blossom, bluebells cover the floor, and birds sing to each other in the tree tops. Once winter approaches, the trees are bare and the ecosystem seems lifeless, like it's hibernating throughout the winter. One of the major differences between this biome and other forest-based biomes is the deciduous nature of the trees. Unlike evergreen trees, these deciduous trees shed their leaves in the autumn just before the cold winter. Their leaves then won't start to form again until early spring. This shedding process is an adaptation these trees have to make it through the winter. Deciduous leaves are much larger than evergreen leaves, and so they don't have the necessary structure to survive the winter. To hold on to the leaves takes vital energy from the tree, and so if they're going to get damaged anyway during the winter, they might as well conserve the energy and drop them. Releasing the leaves decreases the overall surface area of the tree, making it less likely to be blown over or catch snow, which will make it colder. The leaves they drop scatter the forest floor, and decomposers work to break them down into small molecules so they can be absorbed continuing on the nutrient cycle. The amount of leaves that cover the forest floor is astonishing. To put it into perspective, a single oak tree can produce over 250,000 leaves. The whole process of leaf shedding is controlled by the plant hormone auxin. In normal summer conditions, auxin flows smoothly to the leaves. However, when temperatures start dropping, auxin transportation to the leaves begins to slow. There's an abscission layer that separates the boundaries of the leaf from the branch of the tree. This lack of auxin begins to stimulate the process of abscission along the abscission layer. As temperatures become colder and less auxin flows, the trees begin to lose connections with the cells of the leaves. This lack of auxin begins to stimulate the process of abscission along the abscission layer and eventually cause the leaves to fall off. The change in leaf colour during autumn provides exceptional views of the forest. It's a beautiful sight seeing the forest covered in yellow and orange leaves. The changing of colour is linked to the colder conditions. As they get colder, the leaves stop photosynthesising, and thus the production of chlorophyll, 
a green pigment, begins to slow too. The chlorophyll is responsible for the vibrant green colouring of leaves, and throughout autumn, the leaves start turning into a variety of red, orange and yellow. The animals that have survived in this biome over the years have their own ways of dealing with the changing conditions. Squirrels spend the autumn collecting acorns and other food to store in a cache, which they will return to in the winter when food is more scarce. Deer begin to strip bark of trees in the winter as their main food source, the leaves, have fallen. The rich leaf litter along the forest floor is capitalised on by wild boar, who use their big snouts to root them through the litter so they can consume insects, nuts, seeds and potentially small mammals. Tree coopers, a family of small passerine birds, patrol tree trunks in search of insects and worms. Animals that can be found within the biome include wild boar, rabbits, foxes, multiple species of deer, badgers, bears, squirrels, woodpeckers, tits, hedgehogs, jays, toads and frogs. The deciduous forest biome is typically located near to urbanised environments such as cities and towns. Urbanisation is one of the biggest threats to this biome, with many woodlands being at risk of deforestation for the expansion of buildings and houses. Also, this threat is even more catastrophic when you factor in ancient woodlands, which is one of the world's most biodiverse ecosystems. With the ever-increasing global population, more and more valuable diverse ecosystems, such as deciduous forests, are being logged for agriculture land to graze livestock or grow crops. This is a serious threat, not just to the biome itself, but the whole planet, with woodlands being able to sequester carbon and reduce the rate of climate change much more than agriculture land can. Sometimes it's not destroyed for urbanisation, but instead to plant non-native trees such as conifers, which overall reduce the biodiversity within the biome. If invasive plants weren't a big threat, then invasive animals certainly are, Many non-native species have made their way to this biome due to a relatively little adaptation needed to survive here compared to, say, the tundra. One example is a grey squirrel, which has outcompeted the native red squirrel in the UK. Thank you for watching our video on temperate deciduous forests. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please hit the like button and if you want to watch more similar content in the future, consider subscribing.